Hello everyone and welcome on back to Smart Dash Auto Repair. It's been a while since I uploaded the video. I have another one uploading here soon um, and also going to be uploading that Jeep status as far as the engine is concerned for the knocking. So once I have that ready for you guys, I'll upload it. Uh, but anyway, so today we're going to be replacing the brakes on a 95 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's got the V8 in it. This thing's a beast. Anyways, this is a pretty easy job. First things first, you want to make sure you lift it up. You have jack stands underneath. Everything's secure. So that way nothing falls and breaks any components or worse, hurts you. So always make sure you take the uh, necessary precautions. So we're going to be replacing the rotors and the pads. So first things first, we need to take off the wheel, which these are 19 mil. And that could change if you had some aftermarket ones, but these are stock. Um, and then we're going to be taking off the uh, caliper bolts, which is the 13 mil. There's two of them. Take those off, pop the caliper off, take the pads off. And then we're going to probably going to need to hammer this rotor because it looks like it's pretty rusted against the actual hub of the diff. So we'll see. Anyway, so let's get right into it. All right. So first things first, like I said, we have to remove the 10 mil. All right. I'm sorry. 13 mil. So go ahead and do that. You can either break it with whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go get a wrench real quick rather than a socket. Um, but yeah, 13 mil. And then pop that bad boy off. There's just two of them. It's pretty simple. All right. So I got an open end wrench, pretty much ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. So in this sense, you want to go down. So put it on, give it a little love tap with a hammer. And break it loose. Other people have their methods as well, you know, whatever you want to use to get it off. I find it's just easier just to hammer it. There we go, it's loose. You don't have to loosen it all the way with the open end wrench because that's what we got the Kumo for. Three eighths ratchet. Self ratchet. Things for beasts. That uh, Kumo has saved me a lot of time on so many different projects. So now they're broken loose. We're going to go ahead and pop the 13 on on the 3 8 ratchet. Tightening it. Okay, lower the load on. Alright, you should be able to pop these bad boys off. Yep. Make sure we're going to grease these back up once we get into it because, as you can see, a little bit of grease on them. You want to make sure the caliper slides as much as possible. So, we're going to go ahead and pop the caliper off. There's caliper. I'm gonna pop that bad boy off. You can go about it any way you want. Uh, actually, first, there's these little tabs right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So there's a tab right here. And so that tab needs to come off so that way it can slide. There should be another tab on the other side. So we're gonna pop that tab off push it down and kind of wiggle. There you go. As you can see, the caliper moved. We're just going to wiggle it off of the rotor. And there we go. Caliper is free. So go ahead and set that probably next to the suspension over there. Just had, let it rest there for a minute. We'll take care of the pads in a second once we tackle this rotor. So let me angle the camera. So as you can tell, it's very rusted around here. We're going to give it a couple taps. It might be pretty easy, but we'll see. Yeah, that one broke loose pretty, pretty easily. So this is the emergency brake. And holy crap. It definitely needs replaced. But that was not in the cards for today's venture. But there are no pads on here for your emergency brake. I don't believe he wants to spend any money on this, the customer. Because he just wants to kind of drive it until the wheels fall off. <laughs> Um, and he's going to get something else, but yeah, if you ever see these, this sort of wear and tear on your emergency brakes, replace these in a normal situation. But for today's sake, we're just going to put the new rotors back on. All right, stay tuned. All right, so we're back. We've got the new rotor. Just going to slide it on. Boom, just like that. 
just like that the new rotor's on and pop this these brake pads out so there's a couple ways to go about this there's these tabs let me see if you guys can see this tabs right here we basically need to get off so it pops off the back piece just kind of sits in like that all right so anyways uh we're gonna go in and get these brake pads off so you gotta pull it off through here i recommend putting like a flathead screwdriver in here and just take them off so go ahead and do that so yep pop them off you can also use a hammer just to uh you know tap it off of these but now we are ready to install the new brake pads easy peasy so this portion we need to uh collapse that caliper so to do that you want to make sure that you take the cap off the reservoir Blake res uh, brake reservoir and uh, in the engine bay and then from there when you push this the air is going to go out that way so we're gonna get a c-clamp and go ahead and compress this real quick stay tuned all right so I'm back I got my c-clamp you just want to compress it that's it so find a good spot um, any spot works you just need to compress that bad boy So once you find a good spot, start compressing it. Keep turning until it's pretty much flush. So we're getting there slowly but surely. But don't call me Shirley. A lot of my older demographics will understand that reference. Airplane is such a great, great movie. All right, so once it zeroes out, hit the C-clamp off and then you can put the new brakes back on. Pretty simple. Just remove that clamp. Thanks, honey. It's my wife over there. She's solid. Get you a wife that brings you coffee. Love that woman. All right, so caliper is set. We're gonna put the new brakes in. And then but after we put the new brakes in, I mean, you're more than welcome to put some lube on here. Actually, I recommend doing that. So go ahead and get yourself some grease. It can be Wolverine grease, anything. But put it on basically everything that is touching metal to metal. So I put it on these contacts. And I'm gonna go ahead and sit that into the caliper. Push. All right, so that's in. Cool. Set that aside. We're gonna be using the grease here in a second on these contacts. You kind of just want to slide this in place. And it basically clips. Yeah, these brakes were extremely worn. Anyways, I'm gonna slide this this on. These are fun because sometimes you can get your hands. Just be careful. So I might give it a love tap. A little love tap. A little love tappy tappy. There it is. It's on. See, I put the grease on there. That definitely helped put them on correctly. So now you just set this bad boy back on. But before we do that, we are going to add some grease to these parts down here. Where the actual uh, brake pads rest on and slide. Both sides. Okay, so like I said, make sure these areas are clean before you put some grease on. Slap some grease on them bad boys. So that way it's got room to slide. All right, so you wanna make sure that you rest it up like that in the notches and that the actual thing in the back holding the screw is flush. Then you just push it on. As you can see, this little clip is gonna clip it in. So make sure this back here, the actual pin, the caliper is good. There you go, it's on. Boom. Then you just put the bolts back in, two 13 mils, and you just did yourself a brake job on a 95 Jeep. Do it on the other side. 
Oh, also, before I leave, <laughs> don't forget to grease those bolts before you put in, before you put them in. Put everything back together. Don't forget to 